uh, some some riffs. <laughs> I don't mind throwing on riffs. Listen, we're a fans. Uh, we're fans of good music, right? I, uh, uh, Colin, tell you like some. He likes some Kanye every now and again. I got him on that Kanye every now and again. Does that really fall in the same category? Yes, it does. You're like you'll be bobbing your head to some Kanye. Don't I don't think it like falls in the don't. same category. Don't act like you don't. No, I do. I do. See, see. I've got I some got some rap stuff in my itineraries, or yeah. uh, art. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> itinerary isn't the right word at all. <laughs> <laughs> your your playlist. Um, what's up, folks? It's uh, Frag Logic episode eighty-seven. Whew. Getting up there. Thirteen more, Colin. Thirteen more. Finish out the year. We hit a hundred. Ah, it's gonna be feel. It's gonna feel good. It's gonna feel good. This week, uh, we got some Battlefield. I'm gonna talk some Battlefield. I had some people ask me while I was on stream this morning. Some people talking to me at at work. Just some some uh, some different places. People have been you know kind of talking about Battlefield. And obviously, uh, the last couple of days there's been a lot of discussion around uh, Hardline. But uh, I'm very interested in seeing. You know what people kind of feel uh, think about the game from from you guys in chat um since we have hardline coming up the battlefield 4 update just came out today so i'm going to talk about that uh, we got our weekend gaming stuff we're going to hit here momentarily uh what else we have today is a light week but uh we, we got some stuff we can talk about uh hype in gaming is something i want to talk about as a, as a broad thing kind of get some uh, chat feedback from this and uh valve's game discovery update and we got a tetris movie no trailer, and then bots in uh, competitive multiplayer. You guys said Colin's audio is very loud. Let's see. Do I have a boost on? I do. Okay. One second. Should be lower. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk a bit and see how the audio is. I'm going to be so upset if the audio is lagging again. I'm hey, be pretty I upset. Look, Time Warner, dude. Like, what do you want me to do? It's Time Warner on both ends. That should be perfect connection. It should be, but they, you know. And they couldn't they even do it when we were in the same city. They smile and say, fuck you, every day. Have a nice day. <laughs> um, it, so it sounds okay. Okay. All right. Let's see if that holds up. Uh, so, weekend gaming for me, starting it off, uh, obviously some Destiny. I hit level 27, finally. Finally, I hit level 27 this weekend. I think Saturday night or Sunday morning. Are we finally going to do the raid this weekend? We can finally do the raid this weekend and knock it out. Mitch is already ahead of us. He's done the raid three times, him and Galveth. Yeah. And uh, I think he's, they've run with a couple other people from DTS. Uh, I don't know if Koopo was in there. But uh, they've already already uh, been through it. So we have some people that can kind of guide us along the way. I don't want any guides, though. You, want, you just want to do it raw? Not the first time. I want to do it raw. All right. I don't know if we can get some people that are first timers or not. Uh, we got plenty of people in the uh, in the group that basically have said they haven't done it or they want to do it. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to take full first timers. All right, all right. And, and then we'll we can pick it. up the vets for hard mode. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit. Of, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Destiny. Uh, I bought Hyrule Warriors uh, on whatever day it released. I bought it. It was the thirtieth, I think. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, which thirtieth no, is today? <laughs> not today. Uh, I don't know what day it came out. It was last week, right? Twenty sixth, twenty eighth, something like that. Anyway, I got it the night it released, and I have not played it yet because it's actually a game I want to play with Christy. Uh, so is there co-op? I... Is there co-op like a, the old dinosaurs? Yeah, it's, it's local co-op. Yeah. So. Oh, is it like same screen co-op or is it split screen? I'm not sure. I haven't. I haven't even booted up. I downloaded the game, which, by the way, it downloaded so slow. It was so slow, Colin. On Wii. On Wii U, it was so slow. It was like horribly slow. Um, Chrissy seems kind of excited to play it, but she's doing. She's like in the middle of tests and quizzes and stuff for for school. So she's like, we gotta wait. And I'm like, all right. Um, Shadow Mortar also came out today. I actually spoiled it for myself and I watched a couple of streams to determine whether or not I was going to buy it. Everyone has been saying, Colin, this game is awesome. Every single person. Yeah. So I, I, I might just go ahead and... Total Biscuits video on it this morning. Seems good. Yeah. I might just go ahead and buy it. 
regardless of if I thought it was going to be 80 hours versus your telling me it's 30, 20. Um, and that's it. That's it for me. That's all I did. Destiny, pretty much. I, just, I haven't played Destiny in the last few days. I need to get back on the grind. Um, yeah, I haven't done my dailies or anything. Although I like, I'd already knocked all the weekly stuff, and I was getting pretty close to Max Vanguard and Crucible Marks. So it was kind of like there wasn't a lot left for me for the week. Um, after I, I turned my moats alike at the Strange Coin guy, you know all that stuff. So I was just kind of waiting. I'm kind of waiting to do raid at this point. Right. Um, but I also played some Dota. Uh, they had uh, the big patch we talked about last week. Yeah. Uh, they've been kind of iterating on it and changing things around. It's pushing games towards being much longer. It's like much right. longer games with comebacks. Is it disappointing? Uh, I think it's just like a work in progress is probably the best. Okay. Ultimately, it's going to be in a better place, I think, which is how it's been every time. I think every time they've done these post-TI updates, eventually it's kind of found itself into a better place. Uh, and I think something was needed, but it's just like they went super heavy-handed and they're trying to pull back a bit now. Okay. Uh, but I won a 3v5 this morning. It was the hypest shit in the history of hype shit. <laughs> I dropped 34 some kills. It was funny because uh, the two guys on our team were our bot lane. They fed like 10 kills while I was feeding off some crappy players. Realistically, they were. It was a bad situation and they weren't playing well on the other <laughs> side. So, like, I had nine kills in lane phase. The other guy on their team had nine kills in lane phase. My guys were like, fuck it. I'm out. My teammate sucks. So, like, both of them bounced. So it was 3v5. And then right afterwards, which is usually when everyone just disconnects, like your old team would disconnect because there's no elite penalty at that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so right as it was about to happen, I did a 1v4, and my team was like, fuck it. Let's do this. I and wish we spent I could the next, the chat. We spent the next 20 or 25 minutes just coming back, and we tore them up. And it was the greatest thing. It was my highest, like, uh, there's a website, Dota Buff, which tracks all your stats, and, like, they have your records and everything, your personal bests. Yeah. Uh, and it was like almost all of my personal bets for this game 3v5. EG Skyless confirmed. EG Skyless. <laughs> yeah, so I rocked the Troll Warlord during that game. I became the Troll Warlord. <laughs> and this is at 6, <laughs> this is at 6 a.m. Six in the in morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Since my sleep schedule is jacked up. So I was sitting there playing at 6 a.m., getting hype. <laughs> Had to tone it back down, going to work. So yeah, so I played some Dota. I've also been playing this iOS game called uh, 80 Days. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, kind of like choose-your-own-adventure type interactive story. Uh, I think they call it interactive fiction. Uh, the company that makes it is called Ankle, and they've made a few games like this, but this is like the most game-like story they've done. Um, so it's based on the book uh, Around the World in 80 Days, which is a pretty... Like, big title, I think a lot of people have either read it or heard of it, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea is that, like, you start off in London, and you have 80 days to make a trip all the way around the world and get back to London to fulfill a rape, to fulfill a wager. Uh, yeah. And, like, you're the servant-slash-assistant uh, butler to a uh, rich dude, is the premise. And, like, you're helping guide the trip and make all the decisions. And they have, like, 100-some cities in the game, so, like... You literally have like a wide open itinerary and you just have to match the times and trains and everything. Uh, and then when you get to a new city, there's like a story for that city. So it just kind of breaks it down for you. Uh, and you can kind of go to the hotel, you can explore the city and kind of like learn the story for the city and how it's set up. And that can like discover things which make you get across the world faster or slower. Uh, so like the cool thing is like every single city was different that I've been in. And it's been really cool reading through like the different fiction um, for each town, as well as just kind of plotting your course. I've actually done three run-throughs now. Like, on my very first one, I made it around in the 80 days. And then the second one, I kind of took this really long trip all the way through South America uh, just to see what stuff was down there. Because some of it's like you wouldn't normally go there if you're just trying to speed run across the world. Right. Um, and a lot of the games about exploration and kind of unlocking stuff and changing the way you approach the game. Uh, and it's been really cool. I actually am blown away by the game. I think it's... Two dollars or three dollars or something, and I've already gotten a good, probably like fifteen to twenty hours. Actually, it's been like it's been like ten to fifteen hours. Okay. So if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, the game's called Eighty Days, uh, and I won't spoil any of the stuff along the way, but it's a good game. Nemo, Frag Logic hype. What's up? Um. So I know Johnson. What's up, Johnson? Uh, I, I see Lethal is just going. He's going to work. 
<laughs> work on people like you work know, in that chat. yeah social um, butterfly <laughs> uh so colin here here's a question for you about 80 days yeah what's the strangest city you've been to so far there's a city that you go to uh i think it was in finland or sweden um uh, and you get there and it's completely abandoned so like there's nothing at all it's just a city like everyone just up and left uh so like the first night you go there you go into the hotel and you just like leave some money on the counter but there's no one working so you just kind of like whatever we'll leave some money on the counter and then uh go to sleep for the night um but then if you stay there for another night then you have the explore option and you can go like okay i'm gonna go check out the city town hall uh and next to the town hall there's a <clears throat> there's a light you can see and then a stairway going underneath and what they had done is preemptively because there's a war going on they said hey eventually everything's gonna be fucked in this in all of europe so we're going to start building this underground city uh and they built out like this really lavish city underground in in finland so like you go into it and it's like this is this dark desolate place that has this one train that leaves every three days uh and like why is anyone even out here kind of thing and then you kind of learn this big city underground you can talk to some people uh so i thought that was pretty cool and like that's kind of just the general tone is like each city has some motivation behind what they're doing it's not like really samey or anything right uh, and like you'll go through like the desert and like small towns and everything you'll have to go on like camel across the desert which takes fucking forever and all <laughs> sorts of bad things can happen because you really don't want to be on camel through the desert right uh yeah it's so, like there's all sorts of stuff like that and uh, it's pretty interesting how each city had its own story and i'm still i've only seen like 30 of the cities of the hunter song hmm. uh, so i need to do like a really roundabout trip i need to go through africa i haven't been through africa at all I don't want to go through. <laughs> you gotta go to Africa. Might you might get Ebola. Going through well, <laughs> apparently here in Texas, that's the very real possibility. Oh shit! Um, did you see that? No. Oh, you didn't see? There's a confirmed Ebola case at Dallas. They've got them all uh, locked up. Not locked. You know what I mean? Oh shit! They're it's all starting. Guys. Quarantined up in Dallas. It's starting, y'all. So uh, the apocalypse. I'm not leaving my apartment. Just gonna game it up. <laughs> uh, this whole so, thing blow over. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was an interesting weekend. I didn't even know about that shit. Somebody in Dallas. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit. I already see tense, lethal, <laughs> the duality. It's like a love hate relationship. <laughs> oh boy lethal all right so um next up we got you want to i, I kind of want to hit this destiny stuff real quick but i'll go ahead and i'll go ahead and hit the the elephant in the room we'll we'll save destiny here for a second battlefield series discussion all that's right the, so that's the elephant in the room what destiny no battlefield <laughs> no 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 i'm saying well oh did i <laughs> you said you'll go ahead and hit the elephant in the room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Battlefield, Battlefield. Um, I don't think anyone had Battlefield in their mind. Well, they just came out with an update, right? Yeah. Battlefield 4 updated 11 months later. Uh, <laughs> fixing some major issues. <laughs> From our perspective, Hardline was supposed to be out next month. Yes. <laughs> Initially. All right. All right. So I just Initially, want to Hardline this. would have been out next month. If you guys just now look at Battlefield. that list, there's a ton of fixes on there. Um, again, 11 months later, five crashes were fixed across all platforms, um, two of which were exclusive to, I believe, the Xbox and, uh, shit, I gotta click the link again because I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, hold on, let me look. It was, oh, Battle, uh, it was PlayStation and, uh, PC, actually. PS3 and PC. Two fixes exclusive to those four crashes. The other ones were all the other three were all universal across all systems. Netcode issues are still being addressed. Um, there's they talked about unfair unfair kill trading, all the little things that I think Colin, you and I recognized way back when we talked about the game, but like maybe a month out talking about the issues and being able to play, right? Yeah. Um and there were uh, just a, just a whole bunch of tweaks and balance changes with what's going to sell. I think the balance changes are, are kind of expected, but to see some of the major changes to things like netcode, 
obviously crashes. I, I mean, with the, with the game on multi-plat, PC, I, I mean, I would kind of expect that. Um, but here's, here's and, and this is the point you brought up, Colin. Here's where it gets a little interesting to me. It's like Hardline was technically supposed to come out like either this month, October, yeah. basically. It would have been like October, November, right? Or November, right? So you're getting a, a, a patch 11 months later for this game to kind of keep the life going. They're still fixing major issues. And Hardline is right around the corner, comes out in February. Um, I think it's February 15th, or something like that, of, of next year. And some of the things that Visceral is saying are, are things like, hey, you know, um, the game is uh, uh, will work on launch. That was like a quote, I believe, on GameStop. It will work on launch. It's from the creative director, mind from you. From the creative director. Which really isn't the guy you want to hear it from. Um, you want to hear it from, like, the tech director, right? Right. Uh, yeah. And they're saying that things, they like, they it was a pretty fair, like, he said it will work, but the caveat being, hey... You know, that's not to say that we we don't expect issues. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair. I mean, making games, yes. that's something that happens. But, you know, this, this discussion for me kind of spawned from, like, um, I felt like talking about it again because I had some people in chat the last couple of days kind of ask me about Battlefield. I had some people on Twitter ask me about Battlefield. I had a people, uh, one or two people in the YouTube comments this past week or two asked me about battlefield and i was like where's all this coming from because i just haven't i have not had the game on my radar I, hardline has not been on my radar i watched i did not play i watched um the beta gameplay and i was like this is this looks like battlefield 4 and i was like i'm not i don't want to play that again uh, especially considering the experience that i had six months well i didn't even play it that long battlefield 3 i played for four months and was like i can't do this anymore Battlefield 4, I gave even less time. It was like two months, and I was like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're still seeing major fixes for the game. And so I'm kind of wondering, um, you know, there was a uh, concern about, and I've seen this multiple times, I believe it might have been the CEO, uh, but there was a question asked, is the Battlefield franchise damaged as a result of the release of Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, the launches? Would you say that it is at its low point right now in terms of consumer mind share? Probably. Yeah, I'd say probably. It's probably the best. Uh, part of it's that you have all these, the games that do yearly iterations are all hitting their marks like now. Like uh, you have Halo coming out, you have COD coming out. Um, you have, am I missing one more? What's the other big one? Well, uh, there's Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I mean, there's like all sorts of shooters. non-shooters. Um, but I mean, you have Halo and COD. They're yeah. doing their yearly thing. Um, I say Halo isn't yearly, but they have a big title coming out. And Battlefield, meanwhile, got delayed. And the initial impressions are that the next title is really just more of the same again. Yeah. Um, where in the past, it's been like, Bad Company was different. You know, like that was a different tone entirely they were going for um, and even with uh, going even further back to uh, 2042 that was, was it 2042? Battlefield what 21, was the future one? 2142. 2142 thank you I knew it was further in the future uh, yeah like that was completely different right um, even like the old uh, 1942 was different like that was something which added variety like the Vietnam expansion was different uh, for bad company as well. Yeah. Uh, so like all these things were like more innovation, and I don't feel like the same jump in innovation is there from Battlefield three or four to Hardline. And it seems like the community in general is kind of acknowledging that. Uh, mostly, I've been surprised. I follow a few Battlefield YouTubers on Twitter and kind of keep tabs on their YouTube stuff. Yeah. A lot of those guys have quit quit on the game and the franchise entirely. Um, I've seen a few where like it's the same thing we have for Gears, where there's comments like. Hey man, when are you do some Battlefield videos? Uh, and like every now and then, I'll just address it and be like, "Look, I don't like the game anymore. Like it drives me insane that everything's broken." Yeah. Uh, and then people are like, "But the patch just came out." It's like I really don't care. Like I might go back and play when Hardline comes out, but that's it. Like I don't have any interest in playing Battlefield right now. And like this is like three or four people that all share the exact same sentiment. Um, and these are people that 
realistically would be making more money putting Battlefield, Battlefield videos up probably. Um, but they're turned off from the game because of all the uh, issues. And, the, a, yeah, and I think also EA's response to things initially. That's that's an interesting. I mean, and, and to be fair, like EA seems like they're turning a new foot, but I still feel like they're kind of sugarcoating the issue to say, look, look, if you're going to be blunt and honest, like to say that you don't think the Battlefield franchise is damaged, sure, sales are gonna gonna be the dictator. They're ultimately the dictator there on whether or not um, the brand is damaged. But I don't feel like Hardline is gonna push the numbers like Battlefield Four did or Battlefield Three for that matter. I don't but, think it's necessarily even close. Yeah, but uh, to your point, I mean, like, my in my mind, Battlefield went from a game that I was pre-ordering six months. I pre-ordered Battlefield 4 six months before the game came out, whenever you could first do it. Something like four or six months, something like that. Battlefield 3, I did the same way, and I got burned twice on it. And I'm like, man, I love this game, but it's like, I can't deal with that anymore. So even at the, the, the event that I would play the game it would be long afterwards probably at a discounted rate or um in a circumstance where where <clears throat> i would maybe rent it or something like that just to see i just it's it's and and you hit the nail right on the head it's like not only is this like the whatever iteration of the game right and it's hard to continue to innovate on that but the last two haven't been up to par for me to be like, hey, there's all these other games out. I, I would rather sink some time into those games rather than going back to something that's going to be very familiar, one, possibly not work, two, and I would say three, probably lacking, I think, long term for community. Um, it could be potentially, right? Especially for Hardline. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm kind of wondering if this if my sentiment is the same as others. I know there's some diehard Battlefield fans, just like you mentioned, like you get people like, hey, but the batch just came out. Hey, are you still going? Are you going to do this Battlefield update? Hey, are you going to do this? And I always wondered, like, what type of people like what type of gamer is that specific gamer? It's the same way with Gears. Like what type of gamer is the person that is still playing Gears day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, not looking at any other or playing any other game that is coming out, like AAA major title game that could possibly be more fun to them, um, but they haven't given it a chance. Like, how many of those people are out there and why aren't they converting? Like, what is keeping them there, especially for a game that has, for all intents purposes, been broken for <laughs> months? Months. Yeah. Months. I, I'm just I'm I'm at a loss for that. Now, Hardline, we're going to get to. Uh, I want to talk specifically about Hardline. Um, there's a lot of discussion. I'd say these last couple months, trying to. Uh, I'd say not even a couple months. The last couple weeks, really, um, trying to get more information about out about the game. Um, this past week, they talked about uh, obviously Hardline being a, a functioning, working title on launch. Uh, from their creative director. They talked about their new game mode, which I'm going to pull up right here. I got the gameplay video. Um, try. Slow this. Uh, the new game mode is called Hotwire. And Colin, if you remember, we played a game called Tactical Intervention. <laughs> <laughs> that we did. And that we did. It was per perhaps some of the funnest, uh, in a bad way, game play that we probably ever experienced as a like collectively as a, a team um but for anyone that doesn't know tactical intervention the, had... <laughs> the vip at the back of the seat just sitting there <laughs> calm as hell like <laughs> as everything's blowing up around him <laughs> uh <laughs> but basically you get into a car you chase people you have these car chases and uh hotwire is essentially the same thing but it's much prettier and i imagine the gameplay is going to be much tighter and it's actually, um, considering how much fun I had with Tactical Intervention, it might be a gameplay, like a game mode that I would kind of play. Um, I would be very interested to see uh, the reaction to the game mode from other people before I actually, again, sat down and tried to play the game. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see, get this up here. You guys can watch. Move this. And we're going to go ahead and play it. And I have the sound off. So you guys are just seeing visual 
of the of the game. Um, there's the little hot rod. Again, cops versus robbers for anyone that does not know this. And uh, I'm imagining here that the uh, I don't know. Maybe you've stolen something. Who knows? I want to know where it's where it throws What's... you in. I don't know. Any kind of police chase that has missile launchers. It looks really over the top. And from my perspective, like, I feel like there's no damage being done to the decal. So it must be like on God mode, right? Probably. Except for the cop cars, because he just missed and blew his, his, uh, his buddy up. Killed his officers. I don't get me wrong, this, this legitimately looks fun. It doesn't look like Battlefield at all. <laughs> but it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look like Battlefield. It looks fun. But I'm wondering, like, how long that would, like, how long would the fun last? Like, we played Tactical Intervention. Well, mind you, that was a bad game. For two weeks? Maybe? Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty short. All right, so, Colin, here's the, here's the... I put the video for the tactical, for one of our tactical intervention videos in chat. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I don't know what you guys think about it. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. I I'm not. I don't know. Let me just say I don't know. I need to I need to hear some more things about that mode before. Before I go all willy nilly on it and be like, yeah, that's gonna be as fun as tactical intervention. Because tactical intervention was fun and it was a broken game. Literally, like, <laughs> tons of things were broken with that game and it was fun. So, that video aside, I'm kind of wondering, like, what else there could be. Um, and Visceral, not too long ago, um, there's an article on GameSpot that I caught this from. I think this was yesterday. How is Battlefield, no, it was today. How is Battlefield Hardline different than Battlefield? Um, and I'll go ahead and link that in chat. Sorry for you folks on YouTube that get to miss all these things. Um, but they said there's brand new modes, right? We saw Hotwire, the TV style story campaign, and a focus on esports. Now, Colin, here's where Quit I got- Quit trying up. to make esports happen, wait. Battlefield. <laughs> it's not going to happen. What? what? Colin. This We're trying the, to make it happen. It is not going to happen. Do you know of all the things You've that have been said about this game? You've burned your esports community so many times. Do you know of all the things that they've said? That little itty bit, the focus <laughs> on esports, made me more pissed off than anything they've said in the last, like, four fucking years. Do you want to know why? For, for those of you guys that don't know, there have been multiple fucking <laughs> multiple attempts multiple attempts from ea and dice to say we're going to focus on esports this year we're going to have a million dollar tournament we're going to have a 1.6 million dollar tournament we're going to have a 1.8 million dollar tournament it's going to be on two consoles it's going to be two point whatever million dollars three point whatever million dollars we're going to have these million dollar tournaments they did not hold one fucking million dollar tournament they didn't hold one fucking tournament they have not had a big tournament in Battlefield since fucking Modern Combat, which was like in 2004. And every year, every year, they fucking say the same shit yep. about esports. Every fucking year. Every time. Every you guys single don't time. don't know how mad that makes me. <laughs> you guys do not know how mad that makes me because we have spent time, energy, focus mm -hmm. on several games. Because they were like, we're going to focus on esports this year. Every a, fucking year. $5,000 bad company tournament is all that's happened since. And that, uh, was, through, that was through GameSpot and, and, yeah. uh, and Game Battles. It wasn't yeah. even EA. <laughs> Every year, they say the same fucking shit. Every you want to know why ESL runs Battlefield tournaments? It's because EA told them that they want to go in big on esports. That's the reason the ESL was all over Battlefield when it uh, launched. Because it sounded like EA was actually going to go for Battlefield Esports, but it hasn't happened. They haven't actually put the money to it. Not only that, not only has it not happened, but the game doesn't even function enough for it to happen in the first place. Yeah, which has always been the issue. Um, back in like Battlefield 2 days, there was a big competitive community for, uh, for Battlefield. 
uh, on the PC. Uh, obviously, they had the console tournament for uh, Modern Combat, but there's a bigger community on PC playing Battlefield competitively. But they didn't have any spectator tools, right? Like, there was no way for them to really run tournaments and actually have a competent spectator um, system. So, like, when Battlefield 3 came around, the they went to the eSports guys, because Cobb was blowing up, and they're like, hey, we want to do eSports. We want to help you guys do um, tournaments and be able to spectate and get this cool system in. So they started putting these features in, but the game itself wasn't working. <laughs> the game itself wasn't working. So, like, all they got out of it was they were able to have, like, Golden Boy do some pre-release stuff where they were playing the game and spectating with the tools. Yep. And the tools were great. Like, everything's there. And now it's just the gameplay and EA not stepping up to make it happen, uh, which has been the issue. Especially when, again, Battlefield 3, Virgin Gaming, we're going to throw all this money at this uh, Battlefield tournament. And then all of a sudden, like, eh, I don't know. And then they back out. It wasn't Virgin Gaming's fault. Like... Virgin Gaming sucked at communicating it, but that was EA at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, they kept saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's it might happen. Yeah, sure. Like, they were leading people on for months and months and months and months out. But Diggler, that is exactly how I feel. He said they do um, they do that because they want you to buy the game and you're getting trolled, right? So I don't know about the trolling part, but I believe they legitimately say this every year so that the people that are big in esports, all those teams that have that influence over other players go, all right, this is going to be the year, guys. Let's let's get ready. Come on, we're going to do this. And then, nope, doesn't happen for whatever reason. Be it the game be broken, be it they back out, be it esports isn't big enough, whatever the case may be, every fucking year, same shit, different game. I was just like, I had it. I was like, are you fucking serious? I don't mind about anything else they say about the game. Nothing else. But as soon as you fucking throw esports in there after burning the community three fucking times in a row, three in say, a row. Yeah, yeah. I, I, three is probably, you could say four in a lot of ways. Possibly four. In a row. <laughs> what the fuck? Like that, that's what set me off. All right. That's enough f bombs. I gotta, I gotta woo saw because I'm sweating now. I gotta turn my fan on. I don't wanna have to do that. Let's try. Oof. Oof. All right. Now, what I found interesting about uh, the TV style story campaign is that they had the writer. His name is uh, Tom Bissell, I believe is how you say his uh, last name. Who is the author of Extra Lives? Why video games matter? I actually, remember when this book uh, was released? Novel was released. Uh, not too long ago he also did this story for the (coughs) gears judgment campaign and uh, he was quoted for saying in this article um, and i didn't link the article i'm sorry that he is proud of the thug dialogue in uh battlefield hardline so there's like background chatter between guards and what he called thugs and he said he's really uh rather proud of it he said there's like thousands of pages of dialogue in the game so that sounds kind of interesting I also think this idea of TV style story driven campaign seems interesting, but I don't know what that necessarily means for um, the game itself. I don't ever feel like Battlefield has been a very uh, story campaign driven game at all. Um, Not in any single one. Uh, So I feel like the focus here on the story, the campaign, the story, they keep pounding that. Um, That's another thing they keep trying to make happen. (laughs) Right. It's something that maybe this might be the time. Because I don't feel like they've said anything like this focused this many times about the story. Uh, I feel like we heard the same thing with Battlefield 3 and 4. Really? I don't... I just don't remember them like, yeah, we did this and they had the even talking about the game. They didn't even show multiplayer for Battlefield 4 until they had shown two different showings of the story. I guess. Remember there was the scene in the uh, where they come out of like the subway area and they're shooting in the courtyard. Then there was the sniper scene where you're in the tower. But that wasn't that wasn't like a. It was just like showing off how pretty the game was. I felt like I never feel no. like they. I never. I feel, feel like, like they've been trying to make the story thing happen for a while no, now. But here's the thing: Do you ever hear dialogue when they show that? Think about what they show. Like yeah, what it's do not you much. Hear? It's there's big no blockbuster dialogue, explosion right? type stuff. Ex- yeah. Exactly. So I feel like they're just trying to sell graphics, uh, levolution and uh the badass guns and explosions basically in the game that's pretty much it so i don't 
I don't know if that's this this is more of a focus for that. And then again, who is this who is this gonna target? Is, is this like pulling from the people that would normally play military shooter campaign and then they're gonna all of a sudden be like, I wanna play cops and robbers. Sounds like they have a pretty good story. I don't, I don't know. I, I just feel like they're they're throwing everything out at the game um, to try to get people interested in it. And I'm like I said, I'm just over it at this point. I feel Last, like in general, like the game is the battlefield audience is all about the tanks and the big large scale warfare. Right. And it just seems like a really weird direction to take it um, with the more city focused infantry thing. The the interesting thing, uh, I think there was an article, Polygon, GameSpot, I, I don't know where it was, but it talked about the militarization of uh, uh, the police force. Right. And this is obviously really relevant because of Ferguson, right? So um, I, I thought that that little spin on it was um, possibly interesting in how they kind of interweave the two, but I They do kind of take it to like outlandish heights with yeah. uh, Hardline though. Yeah. Like, oh man, those robbers have RPGs. <laughs> right? <laughs> For this bank robbery, they brought the big guns. So, last thing I want to mention, and, um, you know, I've kind of been reading the chat about what you guys feel about it, but last thing I want to mention uh, is that, again, the game is coming out February 2015 launch. Uh, this is just a side note. I feel like, personally, for any time that I can remember in the past, February 2015 has some of the biggest titles I have seen in a very, very long time. For February. Um, and for, for February. Uh, of any year that I can remember previous, there's The Witcher, there's Evolve, Bloodborne, The Order, Hardline, and I'm going to throw Dying Light in there because it's January 27th, which can basically roll into uh, February. So, I, I, look, I don't know. Obviously, I think there's not a big crossover there, um, but if you're vying for people's wallets, like February is kind of stacked, right? Like, and I don't know how if they're coming strong enough, like Colin said, and, and you know I said earlier, uh, I don't know if the sales are going to be there even with the February release. There's not a lot of overlap with that crowd, though. Like there's True. no there's there's no shooter there. Uh, Evolve maybe not really Evolve, though. Evolve, I, I I think Evolve pulls from some. I think the Order pulls from some. After that, the Order, our uh, Bloodborne, no, not really. Bloodborne, Witcher, Witcher nah. no. Dying Light, no. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Personally, I'm more excited for the new Rainbow than I am uh, Hardline in terms of my, like my military shooter fix. I would look. I, I saw some gameplay, and you know, was it called Siege? Siege, yeah. Siege looked interesting. Um, I just feel like that's a game that I need a demo of, and because I didn't like how the gun gameplay looked. I think we talked about it that week. I didn't yeah. like how it looked. It didn't yeah, look strong. I, I've never really liked the guns in Rainbow, but it still seems more interesting to me. Yeah. So. That's it. That's my little battlefield tirade. Again, this got set off because I saw that tagline: "Brand new modes, TV style story campaign, focus on esports." The last bit really killed me. We reiterate three times, four, maybe four. Burned. Burned. Wasting our time. Carrington coming back and playing for nothing. <laughs> All right. All Destiny. of us playing. We had to grind out to get weapons in that game. Yeah. Just, just to be ready for a tournament. S six months after the game, <laughs> after we were like, All right, we gave up on Battlefield. Six months later, they're like, uh, Whatever this $1.6 million tournament on PS3. $1.6 million tournament on Xbox 360. We're like, Oh, shit, we, can, we might be able to play both. No. Um. So, Battle or uh, Destiny. Um, again, I mentioned I'm level 27 in the raid. I need to bring this up because I thought it was just absolutely hilarious. If you guys aren't aware, there was a video that was made called the Interactive Cave Shooting Simulator. It's actually and not just a video. It, oh, it's a video. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a game. It's an yeah. actual game. <laughs> that came out. In uh, quotes. Actual game. <laughs> so, Interactive Cave Shooting Simulator. It's a Unity 
game. And uh, that's all you do. And you some, level quality, up. some quality drops. It's like, look at those blues, look those greens. Those blues, man. This is like, wow. This is what I'm talking about right here. The best part, though, is the splash screen at the beginning with Earth and the lens flares. <laughs> look at that game. That looks just fantastic. Level four. Oh my god. And now they're just they're just splurting. Level five. And he got the legendary Ingram. I see it right there. Ah, what what a game. What a game. Yeah, you know, before we get into uh, the hype topic, uh, I've seen a few articles and like various posts and stuff of people kind of defending the loot system in uh, Destiny with the caveat that oh you guys are doing it wrong you don't understand how the game works you're not supposed to get engram drops and try and get random drops you're supposed to get the guaranteed stuff at the city like that's what the game is about is you kind of build up your stuff you get your marks yep. you go you go purchase the stuff in the city uh and like that's kind of the explanation is like no you guys are just doing it wrong sitting in the cave isn't efficient in the first place you're better off just buying the thing from the city since that's really what bungie wanted you to do and the general premise of these people is that they're arguing that the destiny system is fine and everyone's just doing it wrong uh and it's been driving me crazy reading that all week because that is the worst system in any mmo is the ones where it's just a grind to get the items like where it's just a guarantee like if you do this two thousand times you'll get an item like that is the most boring and dull method of progression that you can possibly have in an mmo and for that to be the core system isn't a sign that it's working and that you can get progression. It's a sign that they failed miserably, that that is the best way to get gear and the only way to get gear. Um, so it's been, that's just something that's been itching at me all week is just reading that over and over and over. People saying, no, you're just doing it wrong. You're supposed to get the guaranteed stuff from the city. That's what you're supposed to do, done. Just get your marks, go buy your gear. You don't have to do Engram stuff. You don't have to. Never mind the fact that that's what's fun and that's what makes loot games fun. That's what makes yeah. Diablo fun. That's what makes yeah. Borderlands fun is when you see something drop from a boss, which also doesn't happen in Destiny for some reason. Listen. You see something drop from a boss and you're like, oh shit, what is that? And you run over there and pick it up and then you get to start using it. And also in Destiny, you have to go level up your gear after you get it. So you get this cool little thing, and but nope, you don't actually get the thing which makes it unique until you put another five hours into the weapon in order to get it unlocked. I, Again, like there is no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it. I think of all the loot things, the one that bothers me the most is that when you kill a boss, it feels so, so it's super dull. underwhelming. Like, why wouldn't they drop the end of strike rewards from the boss? At least, like, why would you split that off into a menu, an, an RNG menu? Just so, so bad. It's like it's like, like you're in Vegas. I feel like every time that, that screen comes up, you're in Vegas. It's not, is, though. Know. You get way more stimulation from pulling a slot machine than you do from that. <laughs> I know. I agree. You get way more stimulation. <laughs> There's nothing. There is nothing to it. The only thing they do is a little tiny fade as it like does a pulse thing to see if you get anything or not. That's it. Yeah. Pull, pull a slot machine. I got sounds. I got lights flashing. I got these things spinning. It reveals one at a time. What is RNG? Random number generator. It's random. Just random, basically. Same. It's not uh, satisfying at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, look. I don't think I've talked about the story enough. Uh, but now that I'm level 27, and, you know, I, I said this a couple weeks ago. Like, I see all these people. And, and look, I love the. I've been playing the game nonstop, but I play it for different reasons. Right? Like, I play it for completely different reasons. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, hold on one second, guys. I'll be right back. My daughter's going nuts right now. <laughs> I'll be right back with my, with my discussion on, uh, on Destiny. Relax with the stimulation topic. <laughs> yeah, 
I don't want to derail everything by going uh, through the topic list while he's gone. So if you guys have any uh, general thoughts in chat, feel free. Yeah, the Angry Joe review I actually liked a lot for Destiny. Does Caleb play Destiny a lot because he doesn't have a lot to play right now? I think m many of us are kind of talking about the fact that once some of these games come out next month, it's going to be really hard to be on Destiny. Um, like the DLC and expansions and stuff, uh, maybe pull us back. Updates and events, like, I want to play the, uh, they announced the Temple of Osiris thing, uh, which was the, you use like a mode of light, and then uh, you play through the arena, and you lose three times and you're out kind of thing. Uh, that sounds really compelling to me, and I want to try that, but, like, beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> Completely, how am I? I'm doing all right. How are all of you? No, I haven't seen Listen Linda on YouTube. Talked about about the Dota update earlier today. I don't know if you were here when we started. Maybe not paying attention. I think it's all right. I think ultimately everything's going to work out. Right now they have to work out some... Uh, some some issues. Shadow Mortar's been getting nines, but Destiny's getting nothing but sixes and fives. I understand it's disappointing, but at least seven or eight. Numbers are all relative, right? I think that's end of the day. Like Destiny gets judged against MMOs which I feel like do a better job considerably. And it also gets judged against multiplayer shooters and co-op shooters, which also kind of do more polished stuff, where Shadow Mortar gets compared to Arkham and Assassin's Creed, right? So I think that's a big reason behind the ratings for both games. I'll make a note of it. Listen. Yeah, it's been interesting reading all the uh, posts about the Destiny story. Possibly getting uh, cut up. It's hard to say because development's so iterative. Have I played any league? I played like I probably have close to the amount of time I have on Dota on league, but I did it in like a really compacted time. Like it was when we quit playing Gears, I was on league all the time. Actually, no, it wasn't really when we quit playing Gears. I guess it was like Gears one to Gears two, maybe two to three. Whatever. There was a period where I played a ton of League at eBash in the Land Center. Uh, but I played probably a thousand plus games easily um, before I moved on to uh, Dota ultimately. It's alright. I like Dota better though. Does ZYM plan to compete in Master Chief Collection? Probably not. We'll do some video stuff though, probably. Alright. Situation resolved. Yeah, man, my daughter's been having like these and, and like I would I would call them anxiety attacks, where uh, it's it's more like like she's just uh, getting like uh, what do you call it? separation from me. So she's like going nuts. So like yesterday, before I came home from work, um, Christy called me like, "Hey, are you on your way back home?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm actually like five minutes away." And I could hear her like crying in the background, just like going nuts. And uh, she she only gets like this every once in a while, but she's like da 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 da, and just comes running over to me. And it's like crying hysterically. Um, but she just woke up from a nap, so she might have been scared. Like where's where's dad? Because I was sitting with her before she went to sleep. So that's my little girl. Uh, but yeah, she's she's nuts. That's right now. She's just hysterical. 
So, um, I don't know where you picked left off if uh, you... I didn't touch anything. Okay. It's been ch- chatting with the people. Chatting with, chatting with folks. All right. So, sorry about that, guy. Sorry, folks on YouTube, interruption, family stuff. Um, anyway, so, uh, story. Um, and I was saying, Colin, like, you know, I think my hype, I made a hype video, right? Kind of crazy, kind of a little exaggerated over the top. But I'm legitimately hyped for PvP, right? Like, that was the next PvP game I was going to get into. Uh, I, other than Titanfall, right? I, there's not been a game that I've been like, can't wait to play this PvP other than Destiny. So, and I was, I got really hyped after I saw that I had a teleport because I was like, dude, I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to be Goku in the air. I'm going to be just like going nuts. <laughs> it's normal when the father works all day. All right, relaxing. All right. We just want to know that I'm not the only one. But uh, I was like, I'm going to be Goku in the air of Vegeta throwing fireballs at people, blinking all around, teleporting like a madman. So I was like, oh, I started thinking about the shit I could do in the game. And so I'm like, man, this is going to be crazy. And I'm I'm enacting like how the vision that I had in my head for the game for multiplayer is exactly what I experienced. And the vision that I had for PvE is damn near, Colin, it's damn near exactly the shit that we said from day one yeah it's especially almost, post beta like it was really obvious around beta it was really but, obvious but people were still like, in denial right it was we said lack of content right like that was that not apparent lack of content was like super apparent and, and i guess like people were, like trying to be like no 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 to us like no 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 no. you guys mm-mm, no no then people come out with the game and it's like they're severely disappointed because a uh what they've seen so far is not better than what they played previously so we made the comparison to what borderlands pso diablo all these other games that have done it before and done it better you throw it in there what we saw from the beta was not better than any of those games so we're like listen we've played this before these games do it better how can you not see this like have you not played and to to be fair i remember some of the people like in the chat or whatever like i haven't played border played diablo Okay, that's fine. You're going to find out for yourself. Then go play Borderlands. Go play Borderlands pre sequel with a couple other buddies and tell me how much more enjoyable that's going to be from a PvE standpoint. I think you're going to enjoy the shit out of that game. Um, so for us, it was like, I, I just, I see all these, these ratings and people are like hyping up this, oh, this is going to be the second coming. I'm going to be playing this shit forever. And now people are like, I don't know if I want to play the DLC. The story is whack. When's Halo coming out? Shit, I'm on PlayStation. I guess this is the only game I'm playing <laughs> for a little while. I mean, these are all reactions that I think we fucking called day one. Day yep. one. So, you know, the, when we talk about the gamer expectation and this hype around the game, I also want to kind of get into the, the content for this game as well with that DLC content leak that just came out the other day. Um, but I feel like the expectations that people have for games... And this is, I think I brought this up for No Man's Sky, if you remember, not too long ago, is being bloated and supersedes like so many of their, I think, realistic expectations that then when the game comes out, mind you, um, again, I love, I love Bungie because of Halo. Um, and I had a lot of, I, I think that's part of the issue with the disappointment with this is that I had a lot of faith in, in Bungie because they're Bungie. But you look at the game, like mechanically, it's like spot on. Like there's other than maybe AI and, and PVE. I mean, it's like it's spot on. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like and, and I'm, I want to really touch on this when we hit it. But I feel like the expectations for what maybe the media plus whatever people are like getting in their head um, isn't. I think uh, conducive to what the final products of a lot of games are going to be. And I think the problem was probably going to persist and or get worse. And there was an article on GameSpot that I read that I tweeted about um, that Danny, what's his last name? Danny D, Danny something. I can't remember his last name. He is the Irish dude that did the whimsical No Man's Sky video. You know what I'm talking about? Danny. I'm just calling Danny. Danny. Um, that's his first i can't remember his last name off the top of my head but he did a a a video talking about like um the expectations that gamers have of a certain age compared to those that are younger 
And so he, he makes a, a pretty good argument based off of what he said about the uh, uh, progression of games from like when people were playing on Atari to Nintendo to PlayStation to or Nintendo 64 to PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360, like the leaps in technology and how games were played and the immersiveness, like leaps and bounds over the last 20 years. And then when you look at the differences between the Xbox 360 and the the or, or and the PS3 and the Xbox One and the PS4, it's it's not that big, right? Like it's not huge, massive leaps in terms of what uh, I think uh, people are expecting. So he's like, maybe he feels like gamers of a certain age, and I think he said he's 28, so I would definitely fall in that category. We have this expectation that every game or every system needs to have these vast improvements or else we're disappointed. And I don't necessarily, I don't know if I necessarily agree with his point, but he did make a very compelling argument. Um, But one of the issues that I think that was kind of withheld and, and I, he might have said it a little bit it's like they're part of the problem but it's like the gaming media before the games even come out like they're hyping the game up like it's the second coming every article you read every time you see something they get plus they got media ads all over their websites like pumping the games out and then you see these youtube i mean it's like it, it's 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 hard to be like recognize the problem but then be also a part of the problem um, as well, and there was a pretty good uh, counter argument to what uh, he was saying by this guy named like Rageaholic or something like that. And his video was just like it was good. He made a lot of great points. He was just like so angry. He was just like, angry, and it, obviously, I think that's part of his his character that he plays right. on YouTube. But he was just like super angry, like cursing up a storm. It's nuts. I don't feel like the media can say negative things about a AAA title anymore, though, because. There's just like this defense force for every major game. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if one site were to criticize stuff in a preview, then they'd be torn apart with the game isn't done yet kind of comments, which you see all the time. And you see it every time there's a beta, every time there's a glorified beta, especially, which is what drives me insane when it's like one month before release. It's not done yet. They can make changes. Like, this stuff will change. They could, they're going to listen. And you see it over and over and over again. But Someone says something and they're immediately criticized because they're saying things too early, essentially. Right. Uh, and the only time you can really criticize a game is when it's review time. And even then, like Destructoid posted a 6 out of 10 for Shadow of Mortar last week. Uh, and that was like far and away like a... It was the only review that was that low, I think, uh, pretty collectively across the major sites. And he was getting bashed. <laughs> like, getting bashed all over the place. And I feel like it's just like with the way that media websites and blogs work and with it being click based and it not being the same as a newspaper where it's like subscriptions and like mm-hmm. that's that's been the model traditionally for reviews and for critical media mm-hmm. um, I don't think it works like <laughs> I think it's a bigger discussion uh, around media but I don't think the formula works and I think that it punishes people that are more critical. So you think the hate, the hype train? Oddly enough, you, YouTube doesn't have the same problems. So I don't know. It doesn't. So you, so what you're saying is based off of again click based uh, uh, model blogs and whatever that you believe that the hype train and I, I feel like this can go either way. The hype train has to keep going in order for them to get the clicks and all yeah. that stuff in order to fuel it and to keep it going and keep people interested and then that cycle just continues. Conversely, though, I feel like if you're willing to be vilified, you can actually do the reverse. And if you're a skeptic, post those, but then you have to be ready for the tirade of internet uh, uh, discussion that typically happens for things that are, you know, like you said, uh, uh, counter to what popular opinion is. Game's not out. Wait and see. This is not a full review. You need to shut up. You know what you're talking about, all that stuff. And I still watch people be torn apart for taking that kind of stance. Um, like Jim Sterling is one who, like, every time he posted stuff on Destructoid that was, like, super negative or critical, like, he would get torn apart in the comments. Right. And eventually, like, I think it was a big reason why he kind of, like, distanced himself from that um, and just started doing the video stuff. And like I said, for some reason, YouTube, like, YouTube reviews are generally way more frank and critical. Um, and I feel like it's more because the community built there is around the around the personality the person 
versus right. the website. Uh, right. Where if I go to Destructoid, I'm not looking for reviews from Nick Chester every time. You know, like to me, I don't even read the person that wrote it 90 percent of the time. I'd say the vast majority of people don't connect with the person that wrote it. I, I would agree. I would um, agree. And at the end of the day, it's the website doing the review and not the person. So you don't really have like this one kind of focus or one kind of view being communicated across all the reviews and content on the website, uh, which again has its benefits. But also as far as a fan base and being able to build a community that's able to acknowledge the fact that that person is being critical because that's like what they do and like that's the approach they take and that they're going to be critical at times. Right. Uh, like Total Biscuit, Angry Joe are good examples of YouTubers that are able to be critical and be successful because their community knows to expect that from them. And as a matter of fact, a lot of them respect them for that. Uh, and that's a big reason that those two respectively have grown really big for the review game on YouTube. Uh, so I don't think that works on websites as much. I feel like it's a huge factor for the hype train effect uh, where I don't think you can criticize games as well on a blog. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I think... I think you can't you know, have a discussion, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, mean, I think I would discussion. generally agree. Now, here's the, here's the interesting thing. Like, All right, so we saw PewDiePie disable his comments. Do you think it is beneficial for... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if it works the same because the media is consumed differently because it's click-based again. Um, but if they were to disable comments, right, on blogs, do you think it would work? They lose the money. If they just too risky. lose money, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, because because what happens is um, you get those comment strings where the person stays on the page, just going back and forth with some person's opinion that they don't agree with. And they stay on the page, and then they have this argument, and they just let that go on and on and yeah. on. And or you on might see on. an outrageous headline or a line, or you might scroll down to the score, and then you go into the chat to see like what everyone's talking about about the score, right. or the headline, or whatever outrageous shit yep. was said. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right. Um, that's definitely probably a big big piece of that puzzle that's uh, missing. So, I mean, for anyone that wants some honest reviews, obviously, I feel like. I'm gonna. I agree with that. I watched, and some of you guys are talking about Angry Joe. I watched Angry Joe's review. Colin talked about it last week. Yeah. Is it last week? Yeah. Colin talked about it last week. I saw it uh, yesterday, and listen, he hit every every single possible issue. I think he hit really mm -hmm. well, and he said the same exact things that we said. Although I don't think he was actually hyped for the multiplayer beforehand, but he said the multiplayer is like the saving grace for the game. And the multiplayer is the thing that has me most interested in the game in the first place. So for me, like, you know, I would probably give the game a higher score than what everyone else is giving it. But I, again, my my total expectation for the game going before uh, and beforehand was, I think, a lot different, which is kind of silly because this is supposed to be a PvE centric game. And I'm sitting here like, I can't wait to play a fucking PvP. Let's go. <laughs> so I, I don't know if my, I, I, I probably in that specific case, uh, an outlier. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't really think that uh, someone should be like, yeah, I want to play this game for the PvP. Probably not. Um, one of the things that uh, Angry Joe hit, and I mentioned here um, just a bit ago, was about the story and how it's lacking. Um, was it today or yesterday we had some DLC content leak? I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. I'm just going to say that uh, uh, it's pretty apparent that uh, this was going to come because I think Colin and I were talking about, hey, we got this vast plan. This, I remember this like at the beta. We have Earth, right? And Colin, look, listen to this. Listen to this. We're on Earth. Earth is this huge-ass fucking planet. Big-ass planet, right? And... The only area that you can, I guess, play is, is old Russia. Right? Well, it's the last city, right? It's the last, I guess so. I guess it's just the last city. But uh, even still, do you think there would be like some ruins of another city or some mountain or something like, let me take me to some area that got destroyed just like old Russia that uh, uh, could be there, right? So I'm sitting there looking at uh, uh, some of this leaked content. I look at the map. I'm thinking, okay, they're going to take us to a new area on Earth. Do you realize it is the same area? It is still old Russia. Like, you don't even go to a new area, so that means... Yeah, it just opens a door. Yes, that means when you spawn in, it opens a door to a new area to probably fulfill a mission that is very similar to the mission that you already completed during the game. And several of them are already populated with enemies, and you can glitch through the walls and fight the enemies already. 
on the upside, Colin. The other DLC, uh, I don't know if, which one it's in. I did see that the Reef actually had something playable, which was, uh, I think, speculated on both of our parts that it was probably something there anyway. But uh, that's also part of the DLC, and I don't know how many areas are there playable, but at least you're going to get to do some Reef missions. Like the Queen's Bounty missions? I just wonder, like, how much they're going to flesh out the story. I... It seems ridiculous to me that the game only had, like, four or five cutscenes. I mean, storytelling is definitely a big issue, right? Yeah. Uh, and according to what I've been reading on Reddit, it is... It could be things that have gone down. Obviously, there's a lot of decisions that had to be made for this game to get released, but you guys have been following Reddit discussion on, on the game. It's certainly been uh, interesting. Uh, people not holding back their punches. Uh, uh, supposedly, Bungie employees... Uh, posting under, under uh, I, I want to say his name is like 404 Architect or something like that. Uh, maybe a Bungie employee. I mean, it could be someone that's, dis that's disgruntled. Could just be a random person making up lies. I don't know. Anyway, there's a lot of stories there uh, about the game. If you haven't seen it, I would advise you to check it out over on Reddit. Um, lots of stuff to be had there. Mostly stories and speculation aside, I thought it was interesting how many clips are coming up from like the initial reveal they did. Of content that just isn't in the game. Isn't in the game. Like during the videos? Yep. Uh, I think that's probably more telling than any of the speculation the hearsay, or yeah. hearsay. Because uh, that stuff which was done enough that they would put it in a video to show off. Right? But it didn't make it in the game. The game was in ready Including to an entire wooded area, which they showed several fly-throughs of. Uh, where it was like Timberlands type yep. uh, environment. Let's not and forget, that's guys. Nowhere to be seen. The game was supposed to come out sooner than it did. Let's not forget that. The game got pushed back. So what something happened that caused this massive change in what we've now playing as as Destiny. I, I wholeheartedly, you know, believe that. Um, knowing how game development is at this point, games undergo massive changes. Sometimes what you start with isn't what you fin finish with. Sometimes what you finish with may go back to what you started with or may turn into something completely different i've seen it all i've been a part of it all and uh you know i don't it doesn't it doesn't matter what studio you're at i think it happens everywhere um so definitely interesting um and with that note go ahead and hit uh the game hype hype in gaming we kind of already touched on it but uh I just want to mention a couple other things here since we talked about it at length with Destiny, considering we talked about the media portion of it, which is what I wanted to cover. So I think within the last six months, there's been two games that have been hyped pretty hard. Titanfall and Destiny. Titanfall was supposed to be the slayer of all things Call of Duty, uh, if you were to believe what media said. And Destiny was supposed to be the second coming. Um, and I don't, I don't think either one kind of lived up to what the expectations that were set on them. Um, but I will say that for what I expected out of both games, I enjoyed the shit out of, out of Titanfall and Titanfall was received really well too. It was, it was received better than ghost was indeed. Indeed so, it was. If you look at it from that perspective and, it, and did I did its feel job, like, but it didn't catch on. Right. Exactly. I also feel like. Titanfall's uh, uh, design decisions are possibly having implications on some of the shooters uh, currently set to come out and uh, probably down in the future. I think some of their design decisions are having influence of what we talked about, that cycle coming back to the uh, arena style FPS, which we covered, I think, last week. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Again, Titanfall is one where... I think it was just, there's a lot of issues with Titanfall that I, I feel like uh, aren't all, don't, I think, meet up one-to-one. -one. Um, the only note kind of which I think Titanfall missed on was the campaign stuff. Campaign stuff, which, I would agree with. I think that's the only thing they missed on, as Game far as like solid. something that they said they were going to deliver on, but didn't land it, you know what I yes. mean? Yes, and the I think there was an unfair comparison between what Call of Duty had with their weapon system and what respawn used as their weapon system so that created a lot of disgruntled call of duty fans 
and by a lot I mean just on the Xbox because that is the other thing that I want to mention Probably with not. this game is that it came out on Xbox One when the Xbox One was still at 3 million total units sold, which even, look, look, even if you guys do the math on this, right? Think about this, right? You have to really wrap your head around what I'm trying to convey here. Even if there's 3 million units sold and they sold a million copies, that's what, 33% that, which they did, they, they sold a million copies. That means one in three people at the time had that game. That is a lot of fucking people. But keep in mind here, only 3 million fucking Xbox Ones were, <laughs> were sold. Yeah. Only 3 million. That is bare, like, look, to break even, I'll mm. give you an example. Like, what is it? Kings, Kings of Amal Amalar, something like that. I remember this story about this game. It came out in like 2012. It was this game that was like an RP action RPG similar to, uh, similar to Oblivion or Skyrim. It came out and the studio that worked on it uh, hit all their benchmarks and they broke even the game sold like three million copies colin three million copies and they were like oh shit like this was the well-received game um uh, and the studio suffered because of that like i i want to say that uh uh they either went under or they got absorbed by someone else after this uh, game came out that was the one with the um I guess you could say they went under. That was the one where they had the big loan from the uh, state government. And, right. Yeah. So, that was Kurt Schilling's studio. Okay. So that game broke even at 3 million copies sold. 3 million copies sold. Something like that, right? We're talking about Xbox One. It just has 3 million units sold. <laughs> it can't even break. It probably couldn't even break even for what they the, the budget that they probably had for that game. Just flat out. Like... You just do the simple math. Like, I, I don't, like, people don't recognize these things. Like, you talk about the player base, you talk about all the things that people kind of talk about, you know, content, player base, all the games dying, this and that. Like, what do you, what do, what do you expect? I, I just don't understand, like, the reasoning behind some of the comments that I've seen about the game. <clears throat> all, like Colin said, all accounts, like, that game was phenomenal from a multiplayer standpoint phenomenal and that's what their focus was on but you can't you can't have a good lasting community and sustain hype around a game if you're selling on a on a system you're limiting yourself to a system that only sells three million units for comparison cod is expected to sell 17 million units 17 million units so even if titanfall had managed to sell to every single xbox one owner at the time it wouldn't even come close to and the multiplayer sales HD. To answer your question, did Ghost sell well? Now, Ghost has been received as probably the one of the worst Call of Duties to come out since what? Call of Duty 3. It sold 20 million units. While being outsold by Titanfall on consoles. Hold on one second. 20 million units. You guys hear what I'm saying? Like, you guys hear what the fuck I'm saying right now? <laughs> come on. 20 million units. And it was outsold on consoles by Titanfall. Titanfall did better on Xbox One, sorry, specifically. But multiplat and previous gen where there's tons of huge install bases. Not even comparable. But at its core, Titanfall as a game, I think it lived up, personally. Although the hype was pretty unreasonable. Like, yeah, it was pretty unreasonable. And here's the other thing with this, Colin. They had that beta out, right? People were playing the same. This is what I said. They were binge playing that game. I heard people like, oh, man, I'm so excited for Titanfall. I'm so excited for Titanfall. They were playing that beta nonstop, nonstop playing the beta. Then when the game came out, I heard people like, ah, kind of burned out on Titanfall. You realize you fucking spent like 150 hours in the game? You talking about you, you burned out on the game? Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like you spend all this time. Like people are like, "Yeah, it's a great game. It was. I had a lot of fun." I don't. Know, I'm just tired of it. Like you played the beta. Like that's the other portion of it. It's like people are binge playing these games and like, what? That's the other thing about Destiny. And this is where I wanted to wrap these two up. Like people are really eating away at Destiny, just like ragging on them nonstop. Right? These motherfuckers are still playing the game. <laughs> Every person that I've said, Angry Joe included. Like, hey, listen, I hate you. 
Bungie and Destiny, I hate your PvE, but I'm still playing. I've seen this on Twitter. I hate this game, but I'm still playing. I feel like people say the same shit about Call of Duty, right? Like, I can't, I'm so tired of this game, I'm so sick of it. Every but, game's the same, but... Every game's the same, but you know what? We're going to sell 20 million units. I'm going to buy this. And my buddy's going to buy it. I'm going to tell his buddy to buy it. I'm going to tell his buddy to buy it. And his buddy bought it. And we're going to sell 20 million units. Where is the fucking logic? Let me just be straight. I didn't buy Ghosts. I bought Black Ops 2 and I bought Black Ops. I didn't buy Modern Warfare 3. I didn't buy Ghosts because I know what's up with IW. Now, Advanced Warfare has been the only... <laughs> this is the only one that has piqued my interest because again the things that i'm interested in in the shooter seems like they're coming full circle so i was like hmm, i might actually play this game but let me reiterate when we talk about hype and gaming i'm not necessarily even hyped for the for the game i'm i'm ex i'm looking forward to playing an aspect of the gameplay mechanic that has been lost right like i'm not like oh my god this, this game is just gonna be so awesome um, and, and relative to what I've, what one, uh, what I've already known about uh, the Call of Duty franchise, so I know what to expect. So my expectations, I think, are in line. But two, there's, I mean, there's really, at this point in time, like, I'm just, all, everything is reserved. Like, I'm just, I'm going to be pretty even keel, except for No Man's Sky, which I'm, I'm going to hype the shit up out of that game. Because it's, it's, it's going to be a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, uh, I actually don't want No Man's Sky to get hyped up, which is, uh, you know, I talked about the GameSpot article. I feel like the more, it's it's a double-edged sword. The more people talk about the game, the bigger the expectations are. People are going to be talking about, oh, man, I thought you could, like, build planets in No Man's Sky. Oh, I thought you could, like, build cities and planets and fly from planet to planet and colonize each planet and then blow the planet up and then... Uh, 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 get married and then turn it into Minecraft and shit. Like, I, we're just gonna hear ridiculous I thoughts about No Man's Sky. Okay, they're just not done making the game yet. <laughs> I listen. I know, right? <laughs> just, just, just wait. They'll get it in eventually. I just like, look. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to help y'all out. Like, y'all got to keep y'all's hype in. No Man's track. Sky is a ten-year project for them, Kale. <laughs> Ten years. There's gonna be a lot of stuff coming down the line. It's just not gonna be at the beginning, but eventually it's gonna be there. Eventually it'll be there. Oh. Eventually they'll get all that stuff in because it's a ten-year commitment for them. <laughs> it'll so just look, cost you another hundred dollars. <laughs> look, let me let me just say this. There's only been one studio. Oh, and mind you, listen listen to this other stat. As of right now, Call of Duty pre-order rate for uh, Advanced Warfare is half of what it was for Ghosts. Half of what it was for Ghosts. So possibly, maybe people are either getting burned out on Call of Duty, maybe the hype is dwindling, or Activision focused all their attention on Destiny, and this month we'll start seeing the big marketing blitz for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which is what I think is going to happen. I think that's the likely scenario. So we'll see, also, probably like, see that pre-order maybe. rate. Pre-order culture dying down a bit. Yeah, that, you know? that's true. That's true. That that could be the issue. Although Destiny was supposed to be the the most pre-order pre game, game of ever. all time. time. Yeah. Okay, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, the only game that I feel like has probably consistently held its own with expectations, and probably um, I think based on the reputation, has tried to continually uh, create an experience that everyone can rally behind is Grand Theft Auto. And the sales don't lie for that game, right? Like, consistently, they're banging it out and getting bigger. Um, at this point, that is the only one that I'm like, well, and, and, and I, I think that because of Rockstar's reputation, if there were to be a Red Dead Redemption 2, that would probably be another game that would be pretty damn good. Um, but I don't know what type of, like, I don't feel like there was a big... Like, this is going to be the second coming from Grand Theft Auto. Like, I think, again, like Call of Duty, you knew what you were going to get yourself into. And so the game is just getting bigger, right? So, look. Hype and gaming. It needs to stop. Y'all need to... Y'all need to keep your expectations in line. 
and uh, try to look at video subjectively. And then if they have a demo, A, come over here, listen to us. If it's a month before, what do we say, guys? Or if it's a beta. If it's a month before the game comes out, guys, it is not a beta. Okay? It's a demo. So that means whatever you're playing is more than likely, I would say, would you, would, Colin, if you had to throw a percentage. Not even more than likely. I can't think of one example where a game has changed. If from a from during a two month span, I'd say even two months out, I can't think of one example where a game has significantly right. changed. So listen, guys, listen. We have said this multiple times. If you've been listening to the show for eighty seven episodes, you've probably heard us say this at one point or another. If a game comes out, we're gonna say now two months, sixty days, or a demo, or I'm sorry, beta comes out sixty days before the full release of the game, and they call it a beta, and you're like. You're all hyped, like, oh, don't worry. I'm still, oh, I can't wait to get this game. You know, those bugs and stuff that I saw, those crashes that I saw, all that glitch that I saw, that thing that was messed up that I saw, it'll be fixed. No. No. It's impossible. No. <laughs> it is a demo. It is a demo. Let that be the deciding factor on whether or not you're going to purchase the game. Now. If a beta comes out six months or more, I would say six months or more before, before the game releases, then maybe you can say definitively that there's going to be some changes that happened with gears. Halo, I think was six to eight months out, out before the, the game released back when Bungie did the other one. They oh, also rich. did this. Now, mind you, they also, Bungie did this with Destiny, but they did it twice. They did the alpha, which was limited, right? And it was on PlayStation, which is basically the beta. And it was only a month before. So we're looking at, what, four months, right? Three months. Three months. Because there's June, July was our beta. And then all, uh, September was the release. Now, we said, look, Colin and I said, when we played, when we got done with the game in July, we said, hey, look, this... We don't think there's a lot here. We don't think there's a lot here. It was not fucking beta. <laughs> it's not a beta. It's it a was demo. in the back end sense. It was. I mean, they were checking what, like yeah. server infrastructure, like server infrastructure, stress, and right? Yeah. Stress tests for that stuff. But we're just, when we're talking about gameplay changes, right? So here's the thing with infrastructure. Usually, typically, unless it's like Battlefield, there's not going to be this huge rewrite in code for the net code. You're going to turn on more servers, or you're going to turn off more servers. That's it. You're either going to turn on more servers, or you're going to turn off more servers. That's it. I know because I went through a rocky launch. <laughs> we changed a little bit of code, right? We added another machine that was identical to the one that we already had. We didn't change a whole lot of stuff. There were some network issues. Look, I'm not going to speak on whole all the all behalf because I'm sure there was like... Dude, you weren't doing the work. So it's probably a lot of significant changes. But ultimately, we turned on more servers. <laughs> I know. Listen to me, guys. Please, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you be a better consumer of your games. Please, listen. I, I beg of you. Please. Please. All right. I think everyone understands this, right? <laughs> It's Do we have the time? We have the dates and the timeline. This is for you people on YouTube that are missing out. You need to share this with your buddy. Say, hey, at an hour and, and 30 minutes into Frag Logic, an Arctic goes off on the difference between beta and the demo. Fuck, I didn't know that. Now I know. I think people know it, but they go into they go into uh, denial? denial mode. Maybe. Because it's like, oh man, but it's Bungie. Like, that's what it was. It's Bungie, Bungie, man. Bungie's not gonna mess up. I just want to stress. Let me stress this one more time. Let me stress it one more time, guys. Two months or less demo. If it's labeled as a beta. Six months or more beta. Probably a beta. Share it with your friend. Tell a friend. We want to educate. Tell a friend. What about games that don't have a uh, demo or beta? Says Snowman. 
what about those? Then you better wait for some reviews, especially if it's on the hype train, right? I feel raw, like the best raw gameplay is also raw gameplay is a good good indicator. Like, no, I'm not. Let me not. Let me not rag on games. Let me not rag on any that I've seen that I've been like, no, the gameplay is not. But you can just make your own judgment call because there's been some games in the past where I was like, no, I can tell this is going to be not not my cup of tea. You can either tell by the graphical fidelity of how things kind of look and the way they interact with certain things, animations, or uh, gun gameplay. I, I think, especially in shooters at this point, I would say that I, 99% of the time in a shooter, I can tell whether or not I'm going to enjoy the gun gameplay. Five months and 29 days? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Colin, do you think there's a gray... Is there a gray area? Yeah, I'd say it's like five to seven. Okay. Five to seven. Well, I think I think we're clear up on that point. All right, last couple things. We hit some Q&A. I missed uh, like 10 minutes of the show. Stepping out. Any questions you guys have, let us know. Right now. A couple things I want to mention. Colin... Valve's game discovery update is supposedly working. Who says that? Betting on developers? Developers are benefiting from player recommendations. I wonder There's which a developers. Link for it. Uh, I believe this is this is Polygon that I have in here. So which curators are driving those sales? Is there any question? The top ten? Top five. Top five, okay. There should be no question about who's driving the sales. Uh, there's one developer that said 25% of their sales, were, or their traffic, I should say, was from uh, Steam Curator. Pay them. Why are they not getting paid? Why are they not getting paid, Kaya? Oh, and I also asked, uh, I put out a video. It's not hugely popular because there are several reasons why. It's not geek. <laughs> It's not Gears, <laughs> but uh, I released a video asking if Colin and I should do Fra uh, Fragologic Curator Group, and it seems like everyone that kind of commented on that said yes, or that they were interested in us doing something like that. So, we'll add, I'll, I'll start, I mean, I have to start playing some more PC games anyway, uh, to get back in the groove, so, we'll see. Shadow Mortar are probably going to get on PC play with my xbox 360 or xbox one controller i forgot to get the update you use a lot of memory i'm kind of apprehensive video memory I just got the new card yeah i know you got the fancy shit <laughs> i just got that new card i'm good um tetris movie <laughs> when is half-life 3 i have no idea tetris movie isn't gonna happen i don't know why you put it movie. on here look look i just want to i just want to talk about it the Wall Street Journal reported that a Tetris movie is in the works. Threshold Entertainment has teamed up with the Tetris company to develop a live action film based on the game. While no direct, uh, directors or cast are attached to the film yet, there is a story in place. It's a very big, epic sci-fi movie, Threshold CEO Larry Kasanoff tells Speakeasy exclusively. This isn't a movie with a bunch of lines running around the page. We're not giving... <laughs> Uh, feel to the geometric sh uh, geometric shapes. It's not gonna see the light of day. Let me just let me just say this: Kasanov's best known for adapting the Mortal Kombat games to the big screen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> so he, look, if Tetris were to come out with a kids' movie made by Pixar, which it's, it's they're, still, they're not even there, still wouldn't happen. I'm just saying. Look, it makes, this is the only they're blocks, thing. Kale. They're blocks. What do you mean? Legos are blocks. Legos are characters. There's character but, blocks. Have you ever seen a blocks. Tetris block that's shaped like a human? No, but they could do the same thing. Could you imagine? A a, could you imagine a Lego movie without the characters? So and look, just the blocks you, talking to you. Look, do you know how there's Oreos and then there's the off-brand Oreos? Tetris blocks characters would be the off-brand Oreos. Of it's not movie. even the same. It is the same. It's not even the same. Just throw some eyeballs on them. You have like a long straight line with some two little legs, skinny arms, eyeballs. Good. Compare a Lego character to a block. <laughs> the same thing. No, it's not. They have, have a little L-shaped Faces eyes. and arms. They can hold things. 
Dude. They have facial features. That's an important say, part. With the cartoons that my daughter is watching, Tetris characters could be a fucking thing. <laughs> There's just Will no Evolve way. be mainstream esports event since it's competitive? No. I don't think asymmetric uh, multiplayer works. It can work, but not that game. Not that. No, I don't think it works like that. Splinter Cell could have been played competitively. And it was in game battles for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Evolve won't. It'll, it'll be fun to watch, I think. I think that'll be a good game, uh, a, a game that can be streamed well. <coughs> uh, Maybe. Uh, at the end of the day, let me say this. The community typically dictates whether or not a game is uh, uh, eSport worthy. So if the community rallies behind the game and they start doing tournaments and stuff, sure, it can happen. Uh, what do you guys think about Dragon Age Inquisition? They've been showing a lot of gameplay and character customization. Dumbfounded? I I don't remember if I was going to... I remember talking about Dragon Age, but I, dude, there's just so many games to keep track of this year. It's like hard for me to be like, yep, I want to get into it. Looks really cool to me, but I have had so much trouble getting into that franchise, so I don't know. Uh, guns down? Asked, what do you guys think about Destiny? We just spent an hour talking hour. about it. Yeah, we talked about it an hour, and last week we talked about it as well, Guns Down. And the week uh, before. And the week before we talked about it. So, short version, just for you. PvE, we're kind of neutral on. Maybe a little negative. Pretty negative. Pretty negative. I just, wanna, I just wanted to have Colin say, pretty negative. <laughs> <laughs> I set that one up. PvP, I enjoy it. I think Colin is kind of eh on the PvP. Yeah. Um, and I gave my reasons for PvP last week. Uh, Battlefront is there even still a big following made. for Half Life? Oh, dude, if if Valve released released Half Life, it would be like it'd be like chaos in the streets. I think it's one of those franchises that it doesn't matter if you didn't play the other ones, just because you've heard everything about Half-Life, people ranting about it, that you'd be interested in playing. Yep. The Sky Captain's clan is full on uh, yeah. Xbox, unfortunately, so you can't get the tag. Uh, can... I really wish they didn't have a 100-person limit, which is absurd for a clan. Um, but yeah, there's no real great way for us to handle that currently. Major also, there's no there's no reason to because there's no plans in game outside of the tag. Right. Uh, Major Black eighty nine asks. Also, what happened to Battlefront three? Nothing. It's in development by. Dice. Um, Dice. Yeah. I also have in here bots and competitive multiplayer. I think I also have that as the title. So, fortunately, we're we're limited on time this week. But next week. What what do what, what are your just a quick like. We'll talk about it next week, but uh, I did a video talking about bots and multiplayer, specifically for Gears, saying, hey, you know, I feel like it, it, obviously I think there's a lot of room for improvement, but I don't think AI is ever going to be the equivalent of a human being, not in our lifetime, I don't think so. Uh, I could be wrong, but I just don't see that in games. Um, what do you think about bots and multiplayer? Does it have a place? Sure. I think it's good for teaching new people how to play games and be able to try out new stuff. I don't like it in matchmaking. Okay, we'll talk about it more in depth next week. It's a short, short little bit. Uh, Taken three, Colin. Did you see the trailer? No, I haven't. Oh, I would say another... I have to change the frame rate. So it's another series. It. Yeah, it looks better than Taken two. It's the same movie. No, it's not. They're all three of the same movie. Oh, no, it's not. It's the same it's movie, Cal. It's different. And it has <laughs> it has Force Waker in it. It doesn't matter. It's the same but movie. It does, it does matter. Is he a sidekick or is he a bad guy? He's He's a good guy, but he's technically a bad guy because he's trying to stop uh uh Liam. So ultimately I think look, let me let me just tell you how this I think the story's gonna play out. Alright? If you've seen the trailer, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler to you, but the trailer is out there, so it's not like like I only know what I saw from the trailer. Dude's wife dies, he gets murdered, and or she gets murdered. Liam gets framed for his wife's murder. 
And then Forrest Whitaker is playing like either, I think he might be the uh, detective or whatever, or a CIA agent or FBI agent that's after him. So he is a good guy, but he's chasing Liam, trying to turn and He's like, yeah, you know, you could need to turn yourself in. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Um, so ultimately, I think that at the end, it's just going to it's gonna be the same cliche where Forrest Whitaker confronts Liam. He figures out that he was really framed, right? And then uh, he has an option to either turn him in or let him go free, and he lets him go free. That's what I think so. It's the same fucking movie. <laughs> it's not the same movie. They're all the same movie. And He's John Wick is everybody now. And John Wick is pretty much the same movie as well. <laughs> John Wick is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. I'm more excited for John Wick than Taken Three. I agree. Because <laughs> Keanu knows Kung Windows Fu. Thirteen. With Call of Duty 27, what do you mean? They're not. They're going from 10 to 20. It's not. It's it's going from Windows 10 to Windows 20. Uh, uh, <laughs> break. I'm just waiting for them to slip into Roman numerals at some point. <laughs> <laughs> XX. <laughs> just just mix it up. GTA 5 next gen. Anyone? Yes. I'm pre-ordering Windows 13. Mr. Monk, when is this going to be on YouTube? It'll be on YouTube right after we end the show. Not right after we end the show. I'll take that back. I have to uh, upload it there. Uh, do a little bit of cleaning up. And it'll take a little bit. It probably won't go live until like 1 a.m. Is it really worth it to buy remastered games? We have already bought the game, so why get it again? Ooh. Like a, that's like a hard one to answer. I think that's almost worthy of uh, its own topic, Colin. Depends. I mean, it's it's fan service in the end. It's you're trying to appeal to people that really like the game, or people who haven't played it before at all, and they want to play like an updated version because their friends have talked about it. Right. So I think it's one of those where, like, if you really love the game, then you might be interested in the remaster. If you kind of like the game, probably not. If you haven't played it, then a remaster is like the ideal time to hop on and play. Let me just say that Master Chief Collection looks amazing. Yeah, that's not even... It plays pretty well, too. That's like beyond a remaster, really. Yeah. Like, Halo 2 looked like unbelievable when I played it at PAX. Looks good. Uh, by the way, guys, Hello Games is searching for freelance people for modeling and concept. Halo Games, yes, yes. Not even I'm aware. I saw that. I saw the tweet it. Draw some planets. Bungie hasn't said anything about Destiny it. getting private matches. Not so brief. Nope. And well, I mentioned it in my latest um, gameplay breakdown, but honestly, I don't really want private match in Destiny. Multiplayer is the best. Listen, multiplayer it doesn't matter. Is, like even if there's matter. private matches, like why would you play it? Why would you? Yeah, why would you do that? I, <laughs> it's not balanced. So like, why would you try to make it GB or whatever you want to do with it? That's that's <laughs> what I'm. That's my point. It's like I don't understand why you would want a private match because the gameplay is inherently like armor and base and stuff. I, look, people do it in WoW, I guess. So whatever, it's there. It's there. Yeah, I'm still picking up COD. Is that it? I think we're good. Hour 43. Mm -hmm. Long show. But I was on my rant. I was in my rant status. Couldn't be helped. I saw that shit, Colin. Just think about it, it makes me mad. Esports. <laughs> games have been plagued with being overhyped lately. Not many games have much staying power like Titan 4 or Watch Dogs. What do you think the problem is? Did you just get in? McNugget, did you just get in? I don't think I've seen him in chat. No, yeah, McNugget, we just talked about that. 
We're about to head off, though. Check that YouTube VOD. Yep. All right, folks. I'm going to uh, end the stream. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. This was fun. Remember, if you're interested, try 80 days on iOS. 80 days. And that's not a product pitch. Just a good game. <laughs> All right. Catch you guys next week.